Hi everyone and welcome to today's General Hospital Recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps. Let's get right to it because needless to say, it was a pretty exciting Tuesday on General Hospital and I did not expect it to be. So at Nathan and Maxie's place, Nathan seems to be setting up a romantic evening for them and he says he's making up for being so protective of Charlotte before and he, you know, he doesn't no she, no, she doesn't hold it against him how he acted, but he feels that he overreacted. And they're getting romantic, to put it nicely. And then someone knocks at the door really persistently and kind of rudely. Like, I would never knock on someone's door like that. And they're like, I know you're in here, and it's Claudette. Why not? And she has Charlotte with her, because why not? So... Claudette asked if they would want to watch Charlotte for the night. Yeah, sure, why not? Don't you have a phone? So they so graciously accept. Uh, you know, the girl's right there. What are they going to say? No? Like, come on. So uh, she call. oh, and Claudette calls Maxie Nathan's little friend. I'm like, okay, okay, passive-aggressive much. Uh, so uh, after Claudette leaves, dinner is burned because they kind of forgot about it. Uh, smoke alarm and all. I've never been so bad as to put the smoke alarm on off before so they got pizza because why not and there's another knock on the door and it's a rush delivery for maxi it's the dna test <laughs> i'm like oh nice good timing uh like it's like amazon one day for like dna tests right so nathan winds up seeing the letter and it very clearly says it on their dna lab and he's kind of mad and he's like um did you run a dna test on my daughter without telling me and she's like yeah, uh, so Maxie feels Claudette is using Charlotte as a tool, and he crumples up the test, and she's like, no, you can't ignore this, and he says he'll run another test when he feels like it, and she's like, no, bad Nathan, so she uncrumples the test to read it, and we will not get back to that until the end of this video, uh, but I will tell you, we do find out if Nathan is or isn't Charlotte's father, so stay tuned. Yeah, I know, I'm like clickbait, but in the video. So at the boxing rink, as we call it on this channel, because I'm a loser, uh, Anna is boxing with the bag pretty heavily, and Griffin's like, hey, you might want to take a second. You seem to be very vigorous with that. And Anna thinks she should have done more to stop Julian, and now innocent people died, and Griffin's like, what? And she's like, yeah, Morgan died in a hit meant for Julian. So she tells him the whole thing, which I'll have to reiterate to you. Uh, Sonny being out for blood, and he wound up killing his own son, and Anna feels responsible because she knew Sonny would go after Julian, and she didn't do anything to stop it. So Griffin is like... Because he kind of thought he got through to Sonny, and now, like, he just, this is hitting him hard. Again, more blame to go around. Like, Morgan is having more effect on people's lives than he ever knew. And yes, I, it is possible that Morgan will come back one day, soon, not soon, I don't know, obviously with different face and all that, you know, because he's a different person. Uh, but let's work under the assumption everyone is having, like, their, you know, grieving effects and I don't want to take away from that by being too like you know futuristic about it so I just want to kind of stay in the moment of general hospital right now so Anna gets a call from Robert and Griffin stays behind and starts free punching the punching bag yeah just like that because that's how you punch a punching bag and I'm like I don't you're supposed to wrap your hands or else you're gonna get all hurt you know uh yeah I know championship boxer uh so <laughs> where was I I lost my spot because I was being so obnoxious uh so yeah he's very affected by this so then Claudette comes in because why not why wouldn't Claudette come in and she knew she'd find him here and I'm like oh great we're gonna get some nostalgic moments so apparently she followed him after mass one time to a boxing place where him and a bunch of other guys were dressed the way he is now by the way he's since taken his shirt off uh so this is her meeting she has to supposedly go to that she told Nathan and Maxie about. And, you know, she wants him and she knows a way for them to be together. And I was like, this is literally the worst. Uh, so she's being really pushy. And she says that she brought Charlotte to Port Charles and left her with Nathan and Maxie to see how it works out. And the way she says it, he's like, um, are you planning on leaving her with them permanently? Uh, so she doesn't see herself as maternal. And Nathan can protect Charlotte and Nathan already loves her. She doesn't trust herself and she's made so many mistakes. And, you know, Maxie may be annoying, but she knows she's a good mother to her own child. And, you know, Claudette was only good when she was with Griffin. And I was like, oh, Claudette, I literally can't right now with her uh, at the metro court tracy and finn are talking hayden approaches when finn is having a small coughing fit uh so it's like me and april oh 
R.I.P. April. Uh, so uh, Finn asks to talk to Hayden a privately, a.k.a. Tracy, go yonder for a second. Uh, so he tells her his breakthrough was a false alarm, and he has his own lab rat. Like, he was running tests on himself. So he has a bandage on his wrist. I'm not just randomly showing you my wrist. Like, ooh, wrist. Uh, so uh, she's concerned, obviously. So Evan from the other night comes in, the guy from the business card, and he doesn't shake Finn's hand, and he calls his Ferrari a Rari, so already not getting good vibes from this guy. Seriously, a Rari? Like, if you have a Ferrari, call it a Ferrari. You're a person who has a Ferrari. For goodness sake. Like, if I had a Ferrari, but hey, dude, she's my Ferrari. Oh, yeah, my Ferrari's in the drive. Like, the Ferrari? Yeah, the Ferrari. Like, come on. I never stop saying it. So, I mean, I can prove that to you if someone wants to get me a Ferrari. <laughs> so uh this evan dude like he's such a tool right so he started a story about this guy who doesn't did want to give up his house which was basically like a glorified shack because um he had lived there his whole life but he was in the middle of the fairway of the 15th hole and couldn't he tell how much he was messing up the aesthetic and i was like oh my god i literally want to punch this guy in the face uh so <laughs> he feels vilified because he has money with this whole 99 percent thing and like it's not his fault he has money and you know he has to read grant proposals and he thinks that's boring and hayden's like what kind of grant proposals and in his little list he matches medical research and she now he kind of has her attention Gym, right so uh meanwhile finn and tracy are sitting cl uh near a close table um and they think this guy's a tool too and he uh finn wants to talk about the hospital and she says the sale looks pretty serious but they'll find another place for him to do his research all isn't lost and then hayden back at the table uh says she has a friend who's in dire need of grant money and he's like yeah absolutely but he seems to want something in return uh, so she, he said, well, uh, as soon as she's like, hey, ew, uh, he's like, well, you know, you were all over me once I mentioned this money. And she's like, um, no, I wasn't. I was literally just showing interest. Like, there's a difference. And after he says something else, she winds up throwing a drink in his face. And Hayden tells him showing interest isn't the same as throwing yourself at someone. Bye. Uh, also at the MetroCore, uh, Franco thinks he knows a way for General Hospital to reopen so Elizabeth won't have to move away. And he's going to leave in the, not even the middle of dinner. They didn't even have dinner yet. Uh, but he's going to leave and Liz is like, yeah, then I'm going to go to Kelly's and we can meet up there. At the floating rib, Andre sits next to Anna. He doesn't seem to know about Morgan because he's very peppy <laughs> and Anna apparently got a job offer from the WSB uh, at, in a teaching position but she would have to move to Geneva uh, IK leave Port Charles and like she doesn't know if she really wants to do that and I was like well with the transportation that seems to come in and out of Port Charles Geneva should be like a one hour trip max uh, so Port Charles doesn't exactly have a lot of meaning anymore to her and she doesn't feel like she has a purpose there uh, but you know so it's either, like, stay somewhere you don't have a purpose, go really far away for a teaching position, and Andre's like, well, come on, you're Anna Devane. You you can come up with a third option. At Darkham Asylum... Oh, by the way, side note, I really hope they don't gloss over Andre finding out about Morgan. Like, I want a scene or two, like, just that, like, giving him the news. I do not want to gloss over. I want to see it. So, like, I want to see the emotion. I want to see all that. So, General Hospital, make it happen. I, I have no control. Uh, so at Darkham Asylum, a.k.a. Arkham Asylum, a.k.a. Batman, which I think is funny since they do so many D um, Marvel references, but, you know, that's beside the point. Sorry, I watched RuPaul's Drag Race, like, all day today, so, like, I just, I, I'm extra sassy today. So Franco visits Heather, and he tells her Liz is thinking of moving because she needs work, and, you know... Gem and Heather's like, well, she can work at General Hospital because, you know, they caught the killer. And he's like, yeah, except they didn't close the case on Bobby and Lucas. But you would know something about that, wouldn't you? So she says it's all his imagination. Ugh, Spongebob. And uh, he thinks she did something to divert suspicion because she thought it was him who was killing people. So she says, fine. You caught me. Uh, she tried to inject Bobby and wound up injecting Lucas. You know, he went back for his keys. Who does that? I don't know. Someone who needs to drive. And she knew that he'd have a really public alibi because he was at the nurse's ball. And she seems to know, like, details, especially details about the keys. So it would have had to be her. But, like, 
what she just randomly escaped, but then that kind of gets like answered. So I don't know why I brought that up. So, um, but seriously, I feel like, I, okay, let, let me, I'll, I'll come back to that. So Franco asked her to do something for him. What could it be? You know, could fast so Jerva Hospital can open and she feels that he's choosing Elizabeth over her and she'll lose all her special privileges, like apparently going out to kill people randomly. And I guess that's how she got out. That's one of her special special privileges. She, blah, 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 blah. she can go on excursions. I'm a you know what I meant to say. By the way, excursions, that was my mom's word. She's gonna watch this and be like, Hey, I said that. So credit. Uh, so Franco says she leaves him no choice and he leaves and he's like, where are you going? Well, where do you think he's going? He doesn't want to talk to you anymore. At Kelly's, Elizabeth and Laura run into each other. Uh, they talk for a second about Morgan and turns out Laura's picking up takeout for Dante and Lulu. Laura tells Liz that she's going to sell Windermere and Elizabeth supports her and, you know, Laura says, look, the cast and assets are there. There's a bunch of properties and all that, uh, but there's very little cash and if she sells one property, she can preserve the whole estate. Uh, so Laura says also, you know, I don't really want to live with Hayden anymore. And Elizabeth thinks Hayden's selfish and doesn't care if she's affected. She's like, fine, evicted. I don't care. Oh, maybe I'm meant to write evicted. I don't know. It's late. So uh, she said, uh, Elizabeth says she went to dinner with Franco. And Laura's like, Franco? Elizabeth's like, yeah, everyone has an opinion. And Laura can kind of relate because uh, she's... Um, been with people with a dark past before and then Franco hears them talking about him and it's all positive and you know Elizabeth saying how she can tell how different he is and how good he is and like she can see it in his eyes and Laura asks if she's fallen in love with him do we get an answer no we don't and now end scene so Anna calls and says she will rejoin but not in the teacher's position uh, Finn has a really really bad coughing fit so Hayden sees and she goes back to Evan and she's like fine we'll talk about this but it has to be for immediate cash I was like you know I ain't gonna judge uh, Elizabeth uh, doesn't get a chance to answer Laura uh, because she, uh, Laura has to leave Lulu texted her is like hey where's dinner and um Franco walks up to Elizabeth and he says he has what they need and he recorded Heather confessing. So if she's not going to confess to the world, he'll make her. And um, the test... Oh, I'll get back to this. So Griffin says that he can't save Claudette or anyone and she says she'll save him and then they kiss. So the test reveals that Nathan is in fact not Charlotte's father. Dun, dun, dun. I feel like Maury. Uh, so, uh, this theory I totally came up all by myself is <laughs> that, um, Charlotte is, I'm just kidding, it's my mom, seriously, uh, that Charlotte is Valentine Cassidine's daughter, because we really only have it on, um, Claudette's word, how old Charlotte is, or, you know, all that, um, so, which, <laughs> all my mom, I'm just reiterating it, um, so, because we think, she thinks, that if, um, Charlotte was Griffin's, then, you know, Claudette wants so desperately to be back with Griffin that she would use Charlotte, you know, to get back with him, and obviously we know she's not Nathan, so Valentine Cassidine, I mean, that's the only other person we really got in the mix right now, so what do you think of that? But definitely 100% not Nathan's daughter, which I feel bad for this little girl. Personally, I kind of think that Claudette kind of kidnapped her, but, you know, she just seems really, she acts really strangely around Claudette. And I know that it could be because she hardly sees her. Because we know she doesn't spend a lot of time with her because she's protecting her. But still, I don't know. Something just feels weird, you know? Alright, so that is it for today's Drama Hospital Recap. I will see you tomorrow for more. And I hope you have a great day. Bye!